for the participants only second year so uh, third year so third year. So I welcome you all uh, for this webinar on applications of probability and statistics in uh, geotechnical engineering. So I welcome all the participants and faculty members and students uh, who have gathered here. So I request uh, Ratika, uh, third year student, Department of Civil Engineering, SVC, to introduce the speaker to the participants. Yes, Ratika. Uh, am I audible, sir? Yeah, you are audible. Am I audible? Okay. Uh, good morning. It is my pleasure to introduce our chief guest, Dr. T. Ashok Kumar, who has been presenting a webinar on application, probability, and statistics in geotechnical engineering today. Dr. Ashok Kumar is professor in the Department of Civil Engineering at the National Institute of Technology to this day. Oh, the voice is breaking. voice is breaking. No. I'm audible, sir. Yeah, you're audible, continue. Okay, uh, I'll continue, Pratika, don't worry. So it is my pleasure to introduce our esteemed guest, Dr. Ashok Kumar, who will be presenting a webinar on applications of probability and statistics in geotechnical engineering today. Dr. Ashok Kumar is an assistant professor in the Department of Civil Engineering at National Institute of Technology in Puducherry, Karikal. Dr. Ashok Kumar holds a PhD in Civil Engineering from the Indian Institute of Technology, IIT Madras, where he focused on the applications of probability methods in geotechnical engineering. His research interests include geotechnical earthquake engineering, soil structure interaction, and probability, probabilistic approaches in geotechnical engineering. He has extensive academic background with over 10 years of experience in teaching and research. He has authored several research papers in national and international journals and presented his work at various conferences and seminars. We are very privileged to have Dr. Ashok Kumar with us today to share his knowledge and insights on the applications of probability and statistics in geotechnical engineering. So over to you, sir. I once again welcome you to this uh, webinar, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for our accepting. Okay, thank you. Uh, I can't able to see the audience. Okay, I will start. Uh, so shall I share my screen? Okay, well, uh, my slides are visible to all of all of uh, the students. Sir, your volume is very low. Yeah, volume, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, is it audible now? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Oh, okay, fine. So, whether my slides are visible? Uh, yes, sir, it's visible. Sir. Yes, sir. Okay, I'll start our presentation. So, good morning to uh, all, uh, particularly the Department of Civil Engineering, uh, Engineering, Civil College of Engineering and Technology. Uh, I thank the head of the department for uh, uh, this opportunity to present some of my research topics, uh, particularly uh, now we are focusing on uh, uh, the application of probability and statistics, particularly in uh, the engineering. So once again, thank you for the institute for this, this opportunity. So I'll start with the outline of my presentation. 
So I will, I mean, the title I have mentioned, uh, uh, before that I, I will say the title, because it is like uh, the total duration of the presentation is, uh, I will make this the average presentation time is 40 minutes, uh, with a variation of plus or minus five minutes. Okay, so this is, uh, this is the duration I will try to take. So if it is exceeding the time, I will try to stop the presentation where I present it. So this is a typical outline of my presentation. I would like to start with uh, uh, what is the design of uh, uh, design approach, how we are what we are following, particularly in uh, geoengineering. So then, what are the uncertainties in uh, geotechnical design parameters? Then, uh, when these design parameters are uh, involved in uh, uh, foundation design, so how to capture that uncertainties? So we are trying to use the concept of probability, so in the form of random samples. Uh, random variable like that you can come. I will try to discuss one by one. So then I will try to discuss what is the descriptive statistics, then what is probability density function, then how to fix the confidence interval, then hypothesis testing, then sum up. So this is the way I, try, I would like to uh, start my presentation. So going to the first part, I don't want to go with the, with the conventional part of introduction this one. By one. So this is a typical uh, uh, structure. I hope the students from uh, uh, second year and third year and final year, uh, they can, sorry, particularly third year and final year, they can be able to understand what is the foundation of the theater. But I don't know the people who are in the second year. Uh, I think the uh, after some fifth or sixth grade, sir, I think they'll be happy when I'm presenting the uh, concept of probability and the statistics. But still, <clears throat> Okay, when you are going to the conventional design of a uh, geodetic structure, particularly our uh, cell of foundation or uh, deep foundation, where it is for high risk building or uh, that is going for a uh, heavy structure like a uh, metro or uh, bridge construction or flyovers or like conventional, like now we are going for high speed rail project. So, those cases will be going for a uh, design of uh, deep foundation. So, when you are going for a uh, design of deep foundation, you will be depending on several field tests like standard penetration tests or cone penetration test, or dynamic cone penetration test. So we are trying to estimate the uh, strength index value of the soil. But ultimately, uh, from the laboratory test, we are going to arrive the design shear parameter. But what are the field risk we are going to conduct? We will try to do some uh, strength index. Whether the strength is low or high, in that case, we will try to inference. So from the field test, you will be going for a laboratory investigation. So what are the samples we can take from the field? That samples can be uh, under the test in the laboratory to estimate the design shear parameter, particularly we will be talking about the proportion and angle of the friction. Okay. So when these two parameters, what are we getting from the laboratory? It's a highly uncertain parameter. Because for the given soil sample, uh, if you want to get the proportion and angle of the friction, you may not, you may not end up with a single value because uh, people, uh, students who studied a uh, foundation part. So you people know that uh, with the, uh, uh, particularly a clay soil, the same clay can be given as a uh, normally consolidated clay. The same clay when it's most is it will try to be as a over consolidated clay. So for a given single soil sample, you may not end up with single unique C and phi value. It may process a different value, which is which is having some deviation. Okay. So after finding the position and angle of the friction, you may end up with, uh, uh, you will try to use this position and angle of the friction just to get the bearing capacity. Okay, but well, this is the typical outline I want to make a uh, uh, value about use of the concept of the statistics. Okay, so now other than a foundation, we will be using our geotechnical uh, uh, design in case of uh, uh, particularly settlement analysis. Uh, if the settlement analysis is a function of unit weight, water ratio, coefficient of volume compressibility, and coefficient of compression index. So these are the values. So when you are trying to conduct a consolidation test, you may mainly will be focusing on coefficient of compression index and coefficient of, uh, 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 sorry for interruption. Uh, particularly when you're going to deal with the uh, applications like settlement analysis or landfill liners, um, 
and slope slope analysis or seepage analysis will be using the geotechnical design factor, particularly the weight or what ratio, coefficient of boiling compressibility, and the coefficient of compression index are you can deal with the metallic conductivity, all those parameters. But again, I want to insist. When you're going to conduct a particular uh, test on the given soil sample, you may not end up with a single unique value. So that value will have some deviation. So that deviation we will not consider in the conventional uh, working stress method. So that is what I, uh, I want to stress again. Okay. Now these are some of the applications we are using the a single unique value for the design, design of uh, geotechnical engineering structures. Okay. So now, uh, now I will now I'll try to come up to the conventional part. So if, I, if you want to design a foundation, uh, mainly we'll be referring IS uh, uh, 6403, that is particularly for determination of bearing capacity of shallow foundation. So in that, we'll be using a, a typical uh, tensile of the foreign tensile bearing capacity equation. And it is a function of uh, angle of single friction and uh, uh, cohesion value. So we'll be conducting the laboratory test and we'll be getting a single cohesion and angle of single friction value. And that value will be used in the equation, and we will be trying to calculate the allowable just adapting some factor of safety. Okay, so whatever the uncertainties that are associated associated with the cohesion value and angular central friction will be taken care of by simply putting a factor of safety of some some value. And this factor of safety value will be used from typically use of three to five, and which is which will make your uh, structure as highly uneconomical. Okay. So the factor of safety of three and the factor of safety of five, just imagine, uh, because you try to compare with your uh, uh, concrete. So it is like for steel, it is like 1.15, and for concrete, it is 1.5. So when it is comes to a geotech part, still you are, you are on the higher side of factor of safety. That is mainly because we can't be able to capture the uncertainties of deviation associated with the cohesion and angle of So that is what I want to highlight here. <coughs> The uncertainties associated with the small design plan will not be addressed when you are going to design structure the working stress method. Okay. And so at still now, still now in India, uh, we are using working stress method for the foundation. But the last two years, IRC, that is Indian Road Congress, they started using, they started implementing the state, uh, state design method in the design of uh, retaining wall or deep foundation or foundation. But still, it is under the draft. It is not yet uh, accepted for. Uh, uh, for field application, but still in the draft condition, it is still it is under verification. Maybe after some certain years, we may not be we may get the mixture design foundation, uh, particularly for retaining war or shallow foundation, the foundation well foundation. Okay, so before I want to make it further, the earlier told in case of working stress method, we will be simply using if one equation is there. And you're trying to put some value and you're trying to find out the ultimate bearing capacity. That is nothing but the soil, what is the maximum load that can be soil be taken by at least a factor of safety. But, you, but we, we don't know anything on what logic we are putting factor of safety of 3. Okay, so randomly you are putting some 3 or randomly you are putting some 5. But we doesn't know why, why they are using the factor of safety as 3. Okay. But now, that is now uh, it's like LR LR of the approach. That is nothing but the load and resistance factor design. So that I will, I will call it as a limit state design method. Okay. So now I, I am not going to discuss here what is the comparison between the working stress method and limit state method. Just I want to put a highlight. So this is working stress method and this is um, limit state method. Okay. So in case of limit state method, you will not be using any factor safety. Okay. That concept of Factor of safety is completely eradicated in case of industry design method. So what we will do, we will try to put some factor. Maybe if your angle of internal friction is pi, we will try to be in the equation will be taken as 1.1. That's all. Suppose if it is a, a portion, uh, uh, that is whether it is under portion or rate portion, we will be adding some factor 1.1 times of portion in the equation. That's all. There will be same equation, but we will not be using any factor safety for estimation of bearing capacity. We will try to add some partial factor. That partial factor is a function of coefficient of variation and standard deviation. Oh, sorry, coefficient of variation and mean value. So that how to obtain that coefficient of variation and how to obtain the mean value. That is the primary uh, uh, discussion of this presentation. Because I'm not going to show how we are going to arrange the partial factor, but I'm going to show how the 
crowd of the uh, function of radiation and the mean value uh, which is useful for evaluating the partial factor which is mainly used in in-state design method okay so similarly when you are going for lr of the design so i think in, in case of uh, uh, design of our cc structures you will be seeing some different combinations like 1.2 standard dead flow 1.1 terms of wind flow uh, 0.8 terms of uh, seismic flow will be different combinations we will be using uh, when we are designing the structure the similar thing can be done uh, in for uh, the soil also particularly when we are going to deal with uh, industrial design method i will make sure again uh, still now in india uh, we not uh, it is not as we, we didn't start our practicing industrial method for the design of foundation but still uh, particularly in europe they started using uh, industrial uh, industrial design of foundation particularly in the recent two, last two, four five years actually. just this is i want to just show how the uh, industrial design will work okay so now so i told uh, uh conversely we are using working stress method for the vision of foundation i told mainly we can't deal with the capture the uncertainties okay so what is the uncertainties okay suppose i am going to conduct a test in the field okay so now i am going to get a, a different soil profile in the field maybe the top surface can be clay uh, followed by sand and later it can be followed by some heterogeneous layer so i may end up with a different uh, strength <laughs> you can able to see that first part when I'm going to take the liquid and make initially it is in the 10, uh, like a uh, uh, plastic index is uh, 10, and later it is shifting towards to uh, 20, and again it is dropping, and again it is going to vary. So there is a too much fluctuation is there, but how to account that fluctuation? So I, but I'm the design, but, but in the design, I cannot able to design the structure for each one meter depth, okay? I want to make a general value, uh, I want to make a general statement such way that I can able to use a single value for the design of structure. But at the same time, I want to make sure that what is the probability of occurrence of a particular value in my domain. So that I want to ensure. So that is a, a major significance of uh, the probability concept. Suppose if I take in some here, uh, the plastic index is 20. So I'm going to end up with, uh, after analyzing the last pool of data, I may end up with uh, some value. But I can able to uh, define the value uh, by means of, uh, say, for example, if it is 20 percentage, I can able to claim that uh, if I'm going to take a 20 percentage of plastic index, I will claim that 94 percentage of chances I expected uh, uh, expected a plastic index of 20 percentage will try to fall within the domain. So, since I'm going to uh, give the value in terms of uh, possibility of occurrence, so that will do some deviation, and that that is the main reason we are going to design the structure in case of limited design. Maybe initially it may be a little uh, different, but one by one, I think it, it will be able to uh, correlate yourself with uh, uh, this concept. Okay. So similarly, feed value, you can able to see that uh, there is a keep on changing in the strength variation, but for our design purpose, we'll try to normalize or we'll try to generalize to so use some uh, single value with uh, some deviation alone. Okay. So now, I told uh, whenever I'm going to deal with some uh, geo materials, I'm saying uncertainties and I'm saying deviation. So how to account the deviation? So I'll be using some statistical definition, coefficient of deviation. So coefficient of deviation is nothing but uh, standard deviation, that is nothing but the ratio of standard deviation divided by mean. Okay, ratio of standard deviation to mean. Okay, so now you just see here, uh, higher the coefficient of deviation, higher the deviation. Okay, meaning is, if the coefficient of variation is higher, okay, you can't be able to predict the deviation of the soil properties. It will highly deviate. It cannot help. Uh, it, it, it is very, very difficult to design uh, or generalize particular soil profile if the coefficient of variation is very, very high. Here you can able to see the density, it is very 5 to 10 percentage. And you just see there for coefficient of conservation, it is from 25 to 100 percentage. Okay. Similarly, when you do deal with soil properties like hydraulic conductivity, particularly permeability. You just see that the coefficient of variation is 300 percentage. Okay, that is the that is why I'm trying to keep on uh, uh, highlighting uncertainties, uncertainties associated with your distresses. Okay, you, you may not feel the uh, uh, deviation of 300 percentage when I go to say in case of obvious 300 percentage. So now you try to compare with the conventional concrete because you people are very familiar with steel and concrete. Okay, when I go to test 
uh, the steel material, um, let us say I'm going to find out the yield strength of the material, and I, if I'm going to find the coefficient of variation, it should be less than one percentage. Okay, but when you're going to deal with concrete, okay, you just see it is only three to five percentage. You're going to take some, I'm going to take some set of concrete samples, and I'm going to conduct the composition of concrete, and I'm trying to find what is the C value. That is nothing but ratio of standard deviation to B. Okay. And you just see that just three to five percent. But you try to compare this with uh, uh, hydraulic conductivity, it is almost like three or two hundred kilo percentage. So this is the highly unpredictable value. If this is the uh, this is the deviation deviation which is allowed. Then we will be having a sort of confusion. What value we have used for the design of zero structures? Okay. So that we try to uh, uh, analyze how to reduce the deviation, how to generalize. And how to uphold the uh, uh, deviations with the design part. Okay, so this is the typical outline. But in the later stage, I will try to show how to find out COB uh, with the help of statistics, particularly for our ceiling application. But you don't relate yourself with your data uh, part, particularly uh, this probability and statistics is a good tool for entire ceiling. But uh, now I'm trying to relate everything with the data part since I am mostly involved in the data parts. Okay. So now I told there are a, a lot of uncertainties associated with your uh, uh, design soil parameters. Okay, so when I'm going to take soil from the field, okay, in the field itself uh, I have some lot of deviation because if I'm going to conduct, if I'm going to take some three different soil profiles, I'm going to conduct uh, some uh, three or four uh, uh, SPT workers in the field. I may not get the same soil three after analyzing the results. I may not get the proportion soil profile. In the bore well number one, I may end up with some different soil properties, and in bore well number two, I may end up with different soil properties, and bore well number three, I may end up with different soil properties as well as a different strength index. But when I'm going to design structure, I will be uh, relating in the general soil profile so that the general soil profile will be used for the design of formation, maybe the shallow formation deformation. So, particularly, first I want to account the inherent soil variability. The soil itself. Processing different variability in the field. Okay, so that is called a spatial variability. Spatial variability of soil is nothing but the variability of the soil properties. <coughs> sorry, with respect to the uh, vertical direction as well as the lateral direction. That is explained. There is a the soil profile. The soil properties variation in the x as well as in the uh, z direction. That is called as a spatial variability of soil. Okay. The second part is called the measurement of air. Okay. So measurement error, uh, it is like uh, I'm going to take some sample from the field. Okay, if I'm going to take a sample from the field, if I'm going to adapt like a standard penetration test, I may end up with highly disturbed sample. Okay, in some cases I may I will be using some uh, uh, thin wall tube sampler for taking the sample. If that is the case, then the sample disturbance is going to be very very less. If that is the case, how to uphold that variability? Okay, the sampling procedure may adapt may affect your results. And methodology, what is the methodology you're going to adapt? And what is the testing procedure you're adapt? And you'll be using several examples for, for determining the shares of, of the soil. There are three different procedures are there, particularly when you go with uh, uh, triaxial type uh, you, you test is the unconsolidated undrained test is there, consolidated undrained test is there, and consolidated drained test is there. Okay. And all these three different tests will try to give three different portion value and you have to account. The error based on the type of test you are going to use or what is the procedure you are going to use. Okay, then the transformation uncertainty. So I have some set of data. Okay, I'm trying to plot in the graph or the plot of the real. I'm going to plot the data in a spreadsheet. Okay, and I want to analyze the data. So suppose the data is following a nonlinear variation for my comfort zone to make it produce a complexity in the equation. I'm trying to make it as a linear variation. Since I am forcing the data to follow in the linear variation, I am not able to capture the actual variation of the or actual variation or actual behavior of the uh, data. If that is the case, since I am going to make some assumptions uh, that uh, my data is going to follow only a linear variation instead of following a nonlinear variation, so that also will add an will add an error in our results. So when I am going to take the uncertain case, so these three will try to form as a error. So the main thing is inherent soil variability, then measurement error, then transformation uncertainty. 
okay so these three all the three will try to combine as an error okay that error will try to be represent the pumps of uncertainty is that uncertainty is i'm representing in terms of coefficient of variation okay so now i told it is uncertainty is because whatever the term i have used here it's a relevant relevant to the probability concept so now i will try to we will try to discuss something i am not going to discuss detail in probability something so since i am going to consider uh, taking the help of probability to analyze the data because i have some large pool of data and i want to quantify the deviation so i will try to take the help of probability so how the probability works so when i am going to take the probability so it will try to take as a value so the when i am going to deal with probability or mathematicians so they will try they will uh, what all the data we are giving they will think in the front of it's a number okay so that as you know whether it is a unit weight or it is a unconfined composition or it is a compressed strength of concrete or nothing they they will think it is a just a value given to the probability concept okay so whatever any data you are giving so when it push to the uh, probability domain so it will be considering as a random variable that's all what all the data we are discussing right when you are going to put it in the uh, probability domain it will be considering as a random variable so since it is a random since the probability concept will try to analyze whether our uh, uh, data is a quantitative variable or it is like a qualitative variable so mostly our engineering concepts mostly work on a quantitative variable okay so that is what i want to highlight here so what all the data when you are putting in the probability domain it will consider it is a random variable okay so that random variable you have to quantify you have to define whether it is a quantitative variable or qualitative variable and our engineering application particularly in civil whether you are going to deal with geotech or structures or environment or hydraulics mostly we will be dealing with a uh, quantitative random variable particularly we will be dealing with a continuous random variable okay and in some cases this discrete data variable but i have seen most of the case almost 90 94% of our civil engineering data mostly will be discussed in terms of continuous random variable rather than discrete random variable that i think it depends it depends on thing but mostly we will be dealing with a continuous random variable for the analysis so before that to try to make to understand what i because i'll be using the term population sample okay so when i am going to use the probability concept i can't able to uh, consider all the uh, data for the probability analysis because uh, collecting the data is always a uh, money involved issue okay suppose if i want to uh, find out the literacy rate of uh, india okay i can't able to find i can't able to but not not india particularly in tamil nadu uh, I, i cannot able to go each and every corner of tamil nadu to collect the data such as this is the average literacy rate of tamil nadu so what i will do i will try to collect some data particularly in particular domain maybe i will try to collect some 1000 samples uh, maybe the, the population is like our tamil population is like uh, let us say some seven crore uh, i will be take some uh, a sample size of uh, 1000 okay or a sample size of 1 lakh or the sample size of 5 lakh so i will try to take some sample and i will try to analyze what is the average interest rate of uh, tamil nadu and based on that i will try to infer the uh statistics of population so what are the data i have taken a small number of samples that i will take i will represent a sample so from the sample i will try to conduct this statistical analysis and from the statistical sample statistics i will try to infer what is the actual uh, literacy rate of population okay so that i will be in the discussion i will be using the term population and sample so you try to uh, uh, have a understand moment okay okay now uh, <coughs> that is what i told when i put the conduct uh, probability test or statistical test i want to take some samples okay so there are some sampling techniques are there because when i uh, suppose if i want to take some uh, composition of concrete so you should you should be aware what is the new number of samples has to be taken to make a generalized statement okay uh, for example Uh, when you come to test the composition of concrete, after uh, testing the composition of concrete, let's say for example, some I have taken some ten samples. After conducting, uh, you want to find out the deviation. Suppose if you are looking for M30, and suppose if we ended up with M30, you have to make a decision whether the M30 is accepted or not. 
or 10 to 10 is within the permissible limit but uh, if you go to refer your code they will be they will be highlighting like uh, if the mean value is not deviating by plus or minus 15 percentage so you can able to accept that uh, particular uh, sample right suppose if it is uh, mean value whatever value you are getting and you are getting mean value and uh, if any one of the individual sample is deviating uh, more than uh, mean plus or minus 15 percentage so then we are supposed to reject the sample in stop accepting that sample for construction okay so now we should know how to make uh, sampling technique So where you go for systematic time, systematic uh, sampling, stratified uh, random technique, nested technique, and random technique. Particularly, I will be suggesting you go for random sampling because it doesn't have anything. So you are, you are supposed to take random samples after taking the random samples from the field, and if you want to connect and if you want to make conclusion, it will be more relevant. Uh, but I will not say all the cases, particularly for uh, uh, for surveying applications. It better to go for random sampling uh, rather than systematic or those things. Uh, since our uh, material is highly uncertain, the random sampling, if uh, if anything is, uh, uh, if you find the deviation, particularly in the random sampling, that is more or less could be in the uh, safer side even if you go for systematic sampling or nested sampling. Okay, so now since I'm using the concept of probability, our uh, our simulating material. So you are supposed to know what is meant by sample space and what is meant by given. Okay. So now I am going to I will give an example. So I am going to compact the soil field. Okay. I am going to compact the soil field for a type of application. So after compacting the soil field, I want to know what is the density I have achieved. So what I am going to take. So randomly I am going to take because uh, I am going to construct a highway for a stretch of one kilometer or two kilometer. Uh, I'm not even just saying that uh, minimum. It can be even for 10 kilometer, 20 kilometer. I cannot take for uh, every one meter uh, sample for testing what is the average uh, density water I have achieved field. Okay, so I'll be taking some random samples. Maybe for every 100 meter or every 50 meter, I'll take some four sample, and I'll try to uh, conduct a, a statistical study such a way that after I will be taking some random samples. If I say for every one kilometer, I'll be taking some. Uh, Uh, some 16 samples, let us say. So I have taken some 16 samples. Okay, that 16 samples, it is like a sample space. Okay, in that 16 samples, what is my expected value? So that even that is suppose in that even uh, samples, I will be looking for a uh, density of more than let us say, if I am looking for the soil density or if it is more than 1.3 for gram per cc, so that is something but my yield. Okay, now at the Sample space is nothing but what are the total samples I have considered. That is the requirement sample space. And what is the given means? What is I am looking in that uh, sample space? Even though the sample space contains 60 number of samples, I will be looking for the unit weight which is more than 1.35. So that is called even. So whenever you are going to conduct some test, okay, you are preparing some concrete cubes uh, for a for a for a mixture enough of forty, okay. And uh, after conducting the test, you may not all concrete cubes may not be ended up with N40. It may have some N30 or N35, N40, N50. May be deviating. Uh, uh, we can we be having some N number of uh, results. That N number of results is nothing but your sample space. And uh, what you are looking for N40 or your concrete layer more than N35, it is called even. Okay. So now that your occurrence, that is occurrence of your expected value from the sample space, is nothing but your even. Okay, so that you have to get the probability. So after getting the even, you can able to define. So there are chances of 90 percent of chances my expected value, expected value will be more than 40. Or you can able to define only 50 percent of chances my expected value of 40 will be more than uh, expected value of uh, grade will be probability will be more than 40. Like that, you can able to quantify the results in terms of confidence level. You can able to say that this is confidence, and you can able based on the results say that you can able to reject the Accept or you can even reject the slab. So now, so uh, what I told is a probability concept. So if you try to analyze the sample as a random variable, and if you try to convert the random variable uh, into sample space and even, and you try to do some analysis. So before going to the next level of probability, we should know what is the descriptive statistics. So descriptive statistics is nothing but I have some set of data. Okay, I have conducted some data. Okay, I have conducted some. Uh, Uh, unconfirmed composition of soil, okay, 
for the given some funky set of data i, I do not want any uh, probability function just i want to know whether my this is a uh, closely associated or it is deviating too much okay so i'll be taking the help of b that is nothing but averaging the value then we'll be taking the help of standard deviation variance and coefficient of variation so here you can able to find out okay so if i'm going to find out the uh, variance that is nothing but a summation of i i is equal to 1 to n x i minus x bar x bar is nothing but v okay and that is nothing but a arithmetic mean that is our taking average value and x i is nothing but individual uh, value whatever you have getting from the unconfirmed function test okay and you have by n okay so that is the thing suppose if it is a population you will be using n and suppose if it is a sample you will be using n minus 1 you will not be using n to make it clear that is the main difference suppose if you are taking the if you are analyzing the results of sample okay here you are you are supposed to put x i minus x bar whole square divided by n minus 1 suppose if you are analyzing the population data okay then it is like x by x i minus x bar whole square divided by n that is the difference you have to okay so now as i told coefficient of variation is nothing but standard deviation divided by b and now i think you can even understand what is this coefficient of variation i have some set of data and, and i'm going to take the average value and this is a formula for standard deviation now i'm trying to what are the value i'm going to get i'm just substituting and, and i'm just relating the standard deviation and mean <coughs> so standard is nothing but sorry so how much my uh, how much my uh, tested values deviating from the mean value so it is like 20 to 50 percentage or 5 to 15 percentage but this with help of descriptive statistics you are not supposed to generalize the value suppose i were testing here and if any other person is uh, suppose i'm testing some samples at an 80 and, uh, and some people are uh, testing samples at the uh, uh or college of engineering and uh, we, bo we both may not end up with the same coefficient of variation okay that is that is what descriptive statistics will try to compare but if i'm going to quantify the coefficient of variation with help of probability concept if I'm going to get the coefficient of 10 percentage, the people who are working, uh, people who are conducting testing in SVC also, they are also supposed to get the coefficient of the 10 percentage. So that is the advantage of probability concept. But with the help of descriptive statistics, you are not supposed to generalize such statement. You can't able to make claim that others also will get the same deviation. That's what I understand. So without uh, taking time, we'll try to go for the next topic that's coming up, probability distribution. Okay. So now again we'll try to come back to the probability concept, but now we'll be using the random variable x yes, because earlier case I told we'll be, we'll be considering what are the value of putting that is a random variable, but here we'll be including mu that is the mean and standard deviation as the part of probability distribution. Okay, in that case, what are the data you are told? Huh? I have some set of uh, uh, unit data density of the compact of the soil, and I'm trying to plot the graph. And I found that you can able to see here, it will take us time to follow here, approximate the normal distribution curve. It is nothing but a bell shaped curve. So people are well known uh, about the bell shaped curve, uh, particularly if all the data are uniformly distributed, it may try to follow here, your normal distribution of bell shaped curve. Okay. So now, what is the concept of probability? Okay. So now, when I'm going to plot the probability density function, that is nothing but probability distribution. Okay, so the midpoint will try to represent the view that is the population mean and the spread and the spread is whatever it is spreading that will be represented by means of standard deviation. Okay, so what is the help of this one? Okay, one is just simply plotting the uh, probability density function. How this going to help us? Okay, so here it is the this is the way it is going to help us. Here you just see here this is the mean value. What are the samples of this? It is the average mean value and it is the spread. Okay, suppose if you are taking mu plus one times of standard deviation mu plus or minus one times of standard deviation you can claim that 68 percent of probability of chances you have expected mean value will try to fall within this region okay and suppose if you are taking a deviation of mu plus or minus two times of sigma so that will try to show that almost 95 percent of um, probability your expected mean value will try to fall within this region and if you are taking mu plus three times of sigma three times of standard deviation then you can claim that 99 percent of chances were expected will try to fall within this region 
So that is what I'm trying to explain with the help of dry theory bit of the solver. Actually, I'm deviating so much. I'll try to fast. So for my given set of data, so I have used theory bit of the solver as a random variable, and I try to find what is the uh, appropriate normal distribution. Okay. So my sample data may not follow the normal distribution, but some data may be may follow uniform distribution or log normal distribution. Particularly in solving application, mostly we will be dealing with normal distribution or log normal distribution. Okay. There are some other distributions also that you can try to explore. Exponential distribution, geometry distribution, gamma distribution, variable distribution, beta distribution. So for a given our random variable, given it is called the composition of concrete, or duplicate of the soil, or wide ratio of the soil, or unconfined composition of the soil, that will be classed as a random variable. That random variable, when we are trying to find out the what is appropriate probability distribution function, it may take any type of distribution. It is not necessary, it has to follow the normal distribution, whether it can take normal distribution or log normal distribution. Okay, but in most of our solving application, it will be like a normal distribution as the as the most cases. Even if you go refer your concrete code or you can refer your uh, IRC in the group Congress manual, mostly they will be uh, describe, describing the deviation of your uh, material testing in terms of normal distribution, not in terms of log normal distribution. But but in most of the cases, in case of uh, geometry engineering. We will be ended up with a uh, log normal distribution instead of uh, normal distribution. So if it's not a, a generalized, we have to go for normal distribution. But depends on your application, you can end up with either normal distribution or log normal distribution. And even though it is a normal distribution, okay, it is a function of I told it is a function of standard deviation. Okay, based on the standard deviation, you would expect mean value because the standard deviation to one is very narrow. The standard deviation to three it is more wider. Okay, more wider, more narrow. So that will that is how it will try to describe your distribution. So, but now when I'm going to use standard normal distribution, okay, uh, since it's a function of sigma, uh, then for each and every distribution, I have to use I have to take the power of probability. Otherwise, I have to go for integrating the sum, integrating the values to get the uh, what is the percentage of my total sigma. Okay, in that I want to make it simplified. I'm trying to convert my normal distribution into standard normal distribution such a way that here in case of normal distribution my uh, my normal distribution function of sigma okay v is having some value and sigma is having some value when i'm converting my normal distribution into standard normal distribution my v b becomes zero and standard deviation become one because of this advantage Whatever may be the shape of my uh, normal distribution, I can even take the help of advantage of using probability chart to quantify what is the uh, what is the probability of occurrence of the expected value uh, within this domain. So there are different types of uh, distributions are there. One I one is like a Z distribution and the T distribution. Okay, but we have to for your given set of sample, you have to decide. We have to decide. Where I have to follow Z distribution or T distribution, okay? But still, that uh, that common um, common uh, common uh, inference between common thing between the Z distribution and T distribution is your population parameter distribution is normal distribution. Suppose if your population is following a normal distribution, then you can able to take a hit of T test when your sample size is very very small. Because we need some new number of samples to justify or to get appropriate probability distribution function or probability density function. But suppose we do not have that much number of samples, it is much more costly. Particularly, just the you know, as a medical field, uh, it is very very difficult to get uh, uh, samples. It is very costly. Okay, then we need limited number of samples. We are supposed to end up with uh, what is appropriate probability distribution function. Okay. So at the end of the day, I want to uh, make a, a statement because after fixing the, after finding the appropriate density function, so I want to after plotting the appropriate density function, I can able to fix it. These are accepted region and these are projected region. Okay, and this part is called alpha. Alpha is the most significant level. I think people who are studying probability statistics, maybe the current second year, they can able to relate what or what I'm saying. So this part is called one minus alpha. And this part is called the physical region. Okay, now 
So now in this case, now in this case, my value. So I have, I have taken some set of unique weight of the sample. Okay. Since my sample size is only 60, I can't able to take the help of normal distribution plot. I take the help of T distribution. Okay. And I found that this is my boundary. This is my lower border limit and this is my upper border limit. So the soil that the unique weight, which is present between the lower bound limit and upper bound limit, I will accept that as a uh, material for uh, further construction. The soil which is having a unique weight of lesser than this region, I will try to reject the sample for the construction. So when you are going to take some uh, 1,000 number of samples or 2,000 number of samples, it is very, very difficult to uh, make a general statement. In that case, you can take the problem in statistics such a way that it can easily uh, help you whether you can able to accept the uh, tested geo material or you have to reject the tested geo material. So now, now I want to uh, make a uh, complete statement. As I told you, when you're going to make, uh, when you're going to define coefficient and variation that is said in the by sigma, with help of descriptive statistics, we can't able to make a generalized statement. But when you're going to make a coefficient and variation based on the probability function, okay, that will try to make a generalized statement. So after plotting the probability density function, and from that, if I'm trying to find out what is the mu and what is the sigma, okay, so that part will be helpful in making a generalized statement such a way that if I'm going to test the material in the NAT to the cherry, and the people in HVC also will get the same deviation. So that is called generalization. So that is what probably this function will do. And as I told, the the variation, when I'm going to take the help of a probability distribution function, it is a function of alpha. Okay, when you're going to report the coefficient of variation, you have to report alpha. What is alpha you have considered? Whether it is 10% or 5% or 1%. So that is what you have to consider when you go to define coefficient of variation after performing the probability density function. Okay, but this part I want I don't want to discuss because I, I have exceeded the time. Okay, I want to summarize in a smaller way. So statistics is a mathematical tool to analyze a large, large pool of data and to infer the behavior of population from the representative sample. As I told, when, I, when you're going to have some, if you're going to construct a building, you'll be uh, using some types of concrete, okay? For each and every case, you can't be able to test the composition of the concrete, but you, you'll be taking some new number of uh, uh, cubes, so that will be considered as a sample. From the sample, you'll try to infer that whatever the concrete is constructed in the building, it will also have the same uh, of the system, okay? And the statistics is a systematic tool could be used to, uh, it, yeah, systematic tool can be used based on the availability of the samples, okay? Uh, the sample size plays a major role. Whether you're going to the sample size of 30 or, or the sample size of uh, 30 or sample size of 50, that sample size plays a major role. Based on your sample size, your data may deviate. So to ensure that uh, sample size, you are taking sufficient sample size, I will say you take one appropriate distribution. You have to go with the Z distribution or P distribution or F distribution. Moreover, what is the advantage of statistics is nothing but the error associated with the testing procedure. Whatever the error, I told uh, it can be a, a spatial variability of soil, that is an inner variability of the soil, or a measurement error, or it can be a, a empirical model error. All this error can be uh, mentioned in terms of by you can able to report the results quantitatively. This is this much percentage of variance contributed from measurement error. This much is per percentage of variance uh, because of inherent soil variable type that you are able to report. Okay. And inference statistics could be used as a decision making tool. That is what I told. <coughs> after plotting the results, after plotting the data, after getting the sample statistics, and after getting what is appropriate probability function, you can able to make a decision whether you have to accept the slot or reject the slot. So, okay, for example, I have taken some uh, 20 concrete cubes for the testing. I am going to consider building. Okay? So, my client has given some samples uh, to ensure that uh, uh, whether the concrete, all the concrete has been made as per the, as per the requirement. So, after the testing the concrete, I have plotted the appropriate probability function. I and I can able to define my uh, accepted zone and rejected zone. So, the concrete cubes which are falling. Uh, below the falling in the rejected zone, I will not accept for the uh, construction. So the soil which is falling within the accepted zone will be considered for the things. 
So maybe for one or two samples, it will be easy for us to look at uh, the conditions they have been. But when you are going to deal with more number of samples, the appropriate uh, probability distribution is a systematic rule, which will, which will, be more, uh, which will make the decision more complex. Okay, so I, will like, I would like to acknowledge my uh, scholar, Mr. Sankar Ganesh, who assisted in preparing the uh, slides. Okay. So with this, I will try to end here. I think I, I have exceeded that time. And I'm sorry for that. Thank you. Thank you. Is it audible, sir? Yeah, it's it audible. So thank you so much, sir. Uh, so thank you. Yes, yes. Any doubt is there? Any any doubts from the student says or any No, sir, no, sir. Okay. So, thank you for uh, accepting the invitation, sir. Thank you once again. So, I'll inform our HOD, sir. Okay. Okay. So, thank okay. you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.